What's up guys, Craze back again today. I actually want to have a more serious discussion and uh, it's not going to be about, well it is, it actually is about gaming. Uh, unfortunately today it's going to be about our uh, event down in Jacksonville, uh, Florida. As some of you may have heard by now or maybe all of you have heard by now is that there was another mass shooting in Jacksonville, Florida. Which this is an absolute tragedy and it really is hits close to home I think for us as gamers because this was a gaming event. This was something simple. This is like Madden football and people are just getting together having fun. Granted, there's always tempers overflowing and whatever else at these events because you, you put a lot on the line. Uh, you try to win as best as you can, and um, it's really kind of sad uh, that it, this kind of thing happened. As far as I can tell, uh, from the latest news that I've heard and seen, is that uh, three people are confirmed dead. I think that includes the shooter himself, as he actually took his own life. So, I've been checking and looking and seeing if any of my other uh, followers, gaming followers, have actually said anything about this. And, and since I'm kind of half crazy anyways, or at least probably a whole lot of people think I am, if they, especially if they follow my Twitter feed or um, actually check out some of the stuff I'm watching or anything like that, you guys probably think I'm a little insane, a little crazy uh, in that aspect because I do watch a lot of different and informational things and I can see why some people be like man this is this is what this guy's all about and so I'm not going to check him out I'm not going to watch this this is I mean I like the gaming stuff but this other stuff maybe it doesn't apply to me well it kind of does it kind of does <laughs> and, and this is a, like a very very real thing it's uh, really come across to us uh, lately is it uh, it's absolutely crazy because of this so I'm gonna say this um, first off I do want to say a prayer uh, for those in Jacksonville for those families uh, please please join along with me um, Pray in, a, in agreement with me if you would like, because that means it is so much more powerful. Uh, the Bible says this very clearly. The two people or more get together. It is like way poor, more powerful of a prayer. So I'm praying this with you guys. Please join me. All right. Lord, we send our condolences and our prayers to those families down in Jacksonville, Florida. We pray for those that are affected. We pray for the families that are grieving the loss of their own children and friends and other families. We pray that your presence be amongst them. We pray that you love them and show them, even through the heartache and the pain that they're going to be going through, that you are there, you are the comforter. You are the best, and we praise you, O oh God, for that. We pray for them so much. We pray for the other gamers down there that have witnessed and experienced this, who are going to have traumatic experiences for the rest of their life. We pray for them, Father, that they come to know you and love you and know that you are going to be there for them, even on their worst days. I thank you, God. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I th pray that everyone that joins me, they thank you and give praise to you always, for you are in control. In Jesus' name, I pray. All right, thank you guys for joining me on that small prayer. And if you'd like to continue that prayer and, and, and include anything else into it, please do. But that's what I really want to talk about today here is because uh, this type of stuff has happened a lot. I mean, and it has. It has happened a lot in this nation. 
and it's, it's crazy how much this has happened. Um, so, what can we do about it? Well, what am I going to do about it? I mean, it's just a small thing, but I'm going to share with you guys some clips. Uh, I want you to at least check them out. I'm going to give you the full links down below in the description. Check these clips out because I want you guys to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is real. He loves us and has sent his own child to die for us on the cross because he loves us that much as any parent that's watching this. Think about that. If you could send your own child to do that. That is love beyond love, my friends. But it's so real. And these clips that you're going to watch, you're going to see some amazing things. I ain't going to lie. And I definitely recommend you subscribing to their channels and get to know God. Get to know Him. To say you're a Christian doesn't mean you're like, oh, I'm a Christian and, and I'm just going to do whatever I'm going to do because I, God's got me covered. No, it doesn't work that way, my friends. It doesn't. It, it, really, it really doesn't. So I I'm, I'm really hope that these videos will inspire you. You'll be able to check them out. And, uh, and question a few things about your personal faith, if you have faith. If you don't have faith, eh, I bet you you're going to see some things that you didn't think were possible. It's going to be amazing. So, I hope you enjoy them. Uh, if you would like to know more, please go ahead and message me or even check out some of these channels. They are very, very good channels to watch um, because God is real, guys. God is real, and it's going to be a... I, I didn't even know how to explain it. It's just going to be amazing when we finally meet him and uh, see him uh, face to face. Believe it or not. Anyways, enjoy these videos. Check the links out. Watch some more of them. Get God in your heart. And if you are a Christian, I do want to say this one last thing before I swip over to the videos. If you are a Christian... Get into the Bible. Know His Word. Know His Word. Because it is absolutely amazing. If you've accepted God into your heart and have repented of your sins, to know His Word is absolutely amazing. And it arms you for the battles ahead. But thank you guys uh, one more time. Thanks again. This is Crazed. I'm out of here. This is Tony. He's come to our healing service tonight. Now, Tony has a, some problems with his legs, but Tony wears this in his shoe all the time. How long have you had this? Huh? No, how long have you needed an insert? I have a couple years, but... A couple before, years? Before yeah, okay. So you, have, you told me you have one leg shorter than the other. Why is that? I don't really you know. You don't know? You don't know? Monique, come over here. Now, I've taken the insert out so that I can measure his feet. Come over this side. Yes. Okay, so you hold that there. There you go. Now, Tony, sit straight. Put this up. They should be now shorter because you have no answer. And there it is. See that? See that? Yeah. Oh. So, it looks about... Watch this. There it is. There's the difference right there. Okay. All right. You ready to be healed? <laughs> okay. All right. So watch this. Tony, relax completely. Yeah. So, you know, you never know. Yeah.
It's real slow. That's going. It's coming. It's coming. More. 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 Right leg. Come out. Now. All the way. There we go. More. Come and tell me. More. Just relax. More. More. Oh, that was a good one. More. More. Right leg. Come out even now. All the way. More. More. <laughs> More. More. I'm pushing in, right, Tony? I'm pushing wow. in, Tony. Wow. They're the same. Thank you, Father. Now, Tony. We took that out. Now, Tony, you stand up and walk and tell me what it's like. It should be a different feeling. I, you seem normal to me, but you tell me what it feels like, Tony. You're not going to be used to that. What's it feel like? Huh? You feel like you have this in, but you don't. You feel normal, huh? Like you had this in. Yes, amen. Now, before, if you didn't have this in, what would that feel like? Would you be hobbling? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So right now you feel normal. Yes. Okay. Here you take that. So. Give it, no, 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 straight them out. That's right. There they are. Look at that. These were Joe at the beginning. This was what he had in his shoe, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, and it was like that. You're good, man. You're even. You are even. You're not gonna need that. Yeah. Oh man. All right, Tony. So, what do you say about that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Turn my camera around. So, what's your name, bro? My real name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your real No, no. Okay, look, look. look. Um, so, he's dressed up as Batman, so obviously he's not, not going to say his real name is, uh, uh, what was his name? Um, yeah, Bruce Wayne. So, what's your real name? It's Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Okay, so I was just talking to him, and he said he has this issue with his, with his neck. So the reason I do this is because we uh, we travel. She's from Houston, he's from California. We got people from all over the world, and we record this. But I want to show you something that's pretty amazing. So move your neck around to where you do feel pain, for sure. Right, you feel pain, right? Right. Okay. So um, he's gonna do something amazing. He's just gonna um, hold your hand. It's kind of cool. So this is Elijah. This is Elijah right here. Right. You're probably wondering why he's holding Batman's hand, right? Okay. Okay, so move your neck around and try to find that pain. Oh, it's still there for sure. It's still there? Has it moved at all? In any way? Right. Kind of moving a little bit? Yeah, it is. Yeah, see that? It's tingling yet? A little bit, actually. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right, hold up. <laughs> it's like burning right now. Yeah, it's getting really hot, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, really yeah. is. <laughs> so, um, so he doesn't know what's going on. We didn't tell you what we were doing, right? No. No, okay. Okay, okay yeah, so anyways. So did you want to explain to him what you're doing? <clears throat> so, I'm just holding your hand. I'm not saying anything. But you're being healed. 
Yeah. You mean what? You're being healed. You're being healed in the name of healed Jesus, in the name bro. Of Jesus. Really? So yeah. that's we train people around the world to lay hands on the sick, right? And they just did a a six day training that teaches you how to go out and manifest the love of Jesus, man, and it heals people. Right? Do you believe it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Do I don't it? feel it anymore. Yeah. I really don't. So yeah, that's, that's crazy, right? That's awesome. Now, you're not just saying that. No, I really, I can't really feel it. I, usually, I feel it with have this on. It's yeah. Tight. Yeah. But no. Yeah. So, bro. Um, we just want to let you know to be blessed in the name of Jesus, bro. Yeah. And, uh, dude, I love that outfit. I know, man. <laughs> Thank dude. you. Yeah. Thank you. Very so, man. so anyways, uh, how can people get a hold of you, bro? Uh, right here. Check us out on the Justice League. Okay, so look, man. Look, right here. See that? Get a hold of this guy. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Right? They're raising money to, to actually uh, see some kids, some orphanages. And uh, so we just want to let them know in the name of Jesus that God loves them. And bro, we love you in the name of Jesus. Right. Now, you're not lying, right? The pain's gone. No, I really can't feel it. It's still kind of warm, actually. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so what, what happened to your neck? Like, what is it that happened? I was in an ATV accident. Yeah, I hit a pole. And uh, I was going really fast, actually. Yeah. Idiot, but I smashed my head against the window. Yeah. And it actually just recently happened about like, Weeks ago. So now you're wow. fine. Yeah, yeah, it actually doesn't feel bad. <laughs> when I put this on, you know, usually yeah. it's pretty bad. All right, it's bro. It's still a little hot. So. Yeah, I said it just got really hot. So, anyways, yeah. you can do the same, man. So, all right. Be glad. Hold on, man. Oh, yeah. Right now. All right, Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Shoulder go back in place right, right now. now. Right now. Jesus. Every bit of pain get out. I thank you for your amazing love, Jesus. God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the shoulder being completely healed. I thank you for the okay, swelling to go down. The right now, right now. Jesus. The shoulder right now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Right, what the? <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the <laughs> That's the Lord, man. Yeah. That's Jesus. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Sick. Thank you. We're on a mission. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I'm about to go bowling. <laughs> oh, rib? Yeah. And just say in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Rib be healed. Rib be healed. All pain go. All pain go. Ch check your rib. How's it feeling? Doesn't feel irritated at all. Do it one more time. Jesus' name. Rib be healed. Rib be healed. 100%. 100%. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I don't. I can't find where it hurts, actually. Okay. <laughs> Dude, you, you just... Wait, I actually have to test this. <laughs> Hold on. There's only one way. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Weird as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That always hurts. Ask Jimmy. This morning, I was unable to get out of bed without you fucking helping me out. <laughs> oh, yo. Yo, check it out. You just gave your life to the Lord, and Jesus just healed through you. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh. Woo that spirit. fast, Mike! That's right. Wow. That fast! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! That's so cool, man. You just, you just gave your life to the Lord and He just healed someone through you. That was amazing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I thank you, God. Wow. Amen, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.
How many lies do you think you've told in your whole life? <laughs> Two? Two! Two! What do you call someone who tells lies? A liar? So what are you? A liar? Thank Have you. you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Okay. Do you realize what you're doing when you do that? You're taking God's name and using it as a cuss word. It's called blasphemy. It's very serious. And then one to go, I'm giving you four questions. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Ever looked at a guy with lust? Sure. Okay, that's it. Give her a big hand for being honest. It's not easy to do, okay, in front of people, but I really appreciate it. No problem. I'm not judging you, but you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. You're a self-admitted liar, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. That's me. That's you. So here's the big question. We've looked at four of the Ten Commandments. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Now, does that concern you? Slightly. A lot. I'm not religious. But... Neither am I, okay? Okay. okay. I don't like religion. Okay. I'm a Christian. There's a huge difference, all right? Okay. I'm not religious. I'd rather be called stumpy than religious. Seriously. Okay. All right? So... I, I believe it concerns you a lot because you love life. You love the blueness of the sky, the bird yeah. scene, love and laughter, good music, good food, friendship. All these things are gifts of God that he's given to you. And you've used his name as a cuss word and broken his commandments. And because he's just and holy, you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. So what can you do to be made right with God? Have you any idea? Be a better person? No, you can't. That's like saying I'm a judge. Judge! I robbed the bank, shot the guard, but from now on I'm going to be a better person. You'd say, so what? So you should be. So, improving your life will not erase your crimes against man, neither will erase crimes against God. You know what you need? No. You need a savior. Okay. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being in Jesus of Nazareth. Perfect, sinless man who gave his life on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. Now you probably know that, okay? You may not know this aspect, so let's start with the You and I broke God's law. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. Jesus came and paid the fine. If you're in court, even though you're guilty, if someone pays the fine, the judge can let you go and can say, while he's guilty, but someone's paid a fine, she's out of here. But when Jesus is on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. So now God can legally dismiss your case, forgive your sins, let you live forever, commute your death sentence because of Jesus' death and resurrection. What you have to do is repent and trust in Him. Now repentance is an old word, it just means stop sinning. Don't lie, steal, lust, you may fall now and then, but you get up and say, God forgive me, but you continually turn from sin. You're not going to play the hypocrite. That won't save you. What will save you is trusting in Jesus. Okay, and Connor, uh, you said you have uh, backache right now? I do. Okay, and if uh, 10 was the worst pain, what would you say your pain level is right now? Maybe like a 6. Pretty uncomfortable. Okay, perfect. Okay, can you just point out his back? Just say, back. Back. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. 
right now. All pain, I command you to go. All pain, I command you to go. Now. Now. Wait for a second. Now. Do you feel a sensation in your back by any chance? No. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you do or don't. Now, strange as it seems, I'd like you to move around. Check your pain. Look for your pain. Yeah. What's your pain level? Lower now. It's lower? Come down a bit? Okay, so Vader, I want you to say, uh, actually, a lot of people are tall and have uh, back problems. It's because one leg is longer than the other. Have you ever had your the length of your legs checked? No. Okay, come here. I'm going to show you something. Okay, so we just prayed for you, you and your leg grew out. What did you think of that? Yeah, and did you see it? Yes, I saw it. With your own eyes? Yes, I did. How far did it have to grow out? It was like an inch. A whole inch. Yeah. And you saw it grow? And yes. how long did it take to grow? Like three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw it grow? Yeah. Okay, now, check your back for pain. Yeah, it's pretty much like, I don't feel it's like a two now. A two? Okay. Yeah. So we'll just finish off. Um, who, Vader, you want to finish? Sure. Just say back. Back. I command you. I command you. 100% healing. 100% healing. Right now. Right now. Now, do you feel anything going on in your back right now? Sensation of any type? No. Okay, it doesn't matter if you do or you don't. Okay, I would like you to move around. Please check your back pain. Please be honest with us. Don't be nice for the camera. Do you have pain? No, not so much. Not so. You can you can just be straight. You, don't no, worry about the video. It's, it's like the more I move around, like the, it's, it's going away. Yeah. It's starting to leave. Yeah. Okay. So you saw it grow with your own eyes. It's going. Um, show me exactly where the pain is. Okay. Just for the fun of it, you're his friend. Do you do you believe in Jesus Christ? I personally don't. No. <laughs> we just did that in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know. I saw that. Yeah. So, what do you think about that then? It's interesting, but like that's pretty funny. Yeah. You, you saw, uh, you saw his leg grow. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's got to give you a pause. Yeah. As an unbeliever. Especially if you don't believe. <laughs> his name has so power. okay, so just just to show you that his name has power, even though you don't believe. Because I think you actually kind of do now a little bit. Turn around. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I'm just yeah. saying through the experience you went yeah. through, there's some faith that got imparted yeah. to you. Now, turn around. Point, point, show her where the pain is. Okay. Just say back. Back. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 100%. 100%. Now. Now. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Now, I would like you to bend over, touch your toes. Wow, that's good. Okay. Could you do that before? Check for your pain. Really wow. <laughs> you couldn't do that before? No. What's your name? Connor. Connor. So, Connor, do you Connor. have back pain now? Yeah, low key so, guy. Tell your friend what's going on. Yes. Is it gone? 100%. Yeah. So, that, what do you think about that? Are you Now, are you just saying that to be nice to your friend? No. No, so for real. What do you have to say about that? It, like, it was, you just it prayed in Jesus' name. Yeah, a little bit of like, hope, yeah. Now, when you were praying, did you feel anything going on when you were praying? I, I, like, I don't know. I was, like, girlfriend, so, like. Yeah. I just, like, obviously would really want it to be yeah. better. So, yeah. Like, I just have a lot of. Yeah, you have compassion. Yeah, compassion and faith. So. Yeah. So you prayed in Jesus' name. You saw a miracle happen in Jesus' name. You prayed in Jesus' name yeah. and healed his back. So there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's the message for you today. Yeah. What is the number one sign of evil? For those who not, did not get my private Periscope session, right? you can follow me on Periscope and, we, and on Patreon. We do some private things. And I shared this based on the word and experience that the number one sign of evil people is misleading is misleading evil people mislead other people in a conclusive way let me explain that they mislead people in a conclusive way they mislead people even in Bible interpretation this is here's a dishonest way to read the Bible 
Let's say you take one verse. Jesus said, go not to the Gentiles, nor into any town of Samaria, but rather go to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. Okay, that's what he said in one place. That's in, in the Gospels. But later on, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then you know what I heard somebody say? He said, oh, Jesus contradicts himself. See, the Bible contradicts itself. That's why I don't believe it. No, you are misleading people in a conclusive way. You're making, conclus you're making a conclusive statement from a non-conclusive statement. Does that make sense? I mean, it's common in our life to make non-conclusive statements. You might ask me, are you hungry? I say, no, I'm, I, I don't want to eat now. I'm not hungry right now. Later on, two hours later, you say, hey, you want to go out and eat? I say, yeah, man, I'm famished. I'd like to eat right now. Oh, you contradict yourself. No, you're misleading people and you're evil if you do that. Context matters in interpreting the Bible. Timing matters. Did Jesus say something at the beginning of his ministry? or after he died and resurrected from the dead. It's obvious to anyone who's reasonable that one statement is now conclusive, other statements are not conclusive. But evil people will mislead you in a conclusive way. God does not see one-time activity as your lifetime identity. He said that very clearly to me. He does not see one-time activity as your lifetime identity. He does not see a temporary action as your permanent identity. That's not how God sees us. And it's actually very hard to make conclusive statements about people because their lives are not over. It's why it's wrong for you to hold unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody because that somebody could have done wrong, recognized it, repented before God. Now God says, I've cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. It's gone. That means between him or her and God, it's now clear. And you are the one living in sin. Has anyone showed you the three circles before? Have you had a three? three circles before? Has anyone ever shared the three circles with you? Before. No. No. So this is the first circle. So this represents the world that's broken. All of us live in a broken world. You only have to turn on the news and see... Suffering, death. War, sickness. Rape, disease, it's everywhere, right? But you know, God didn't actually create the world to be like this, full of brokenness, eh? Here's the second circle. This circle represents God's perfect design. God's perfect design was a world without brokenness. A world full of love. Full of joy and peace yeah. and unity. But what we did was we sinned. Sin could be anything from lying, lying to murder. To murder. Wait, so like, just like normal lying or like hard lying? And what sin did, it separated us from God's perfect design and threw us into brokenness. And so people try all kinds of different things to get out of brokenness. They might try drugs or alcohol. Or maybe chasing a career or money. Smoking. Even bullying other people at school. Oh, sleeping suicide. around. Suicide, exactly, a good example. But it doesn't actually fix the problem of brokenness. It's like a bungee cord. We just get snapped straight back into brokenness. And ultimately, if people die in that state of brokenness and separate from God, and that means that that's eternal separation from God. Do you know what this place is often called? Yes. So what God did was, He didn't want to leave us in that place. God loved us so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus was God, so yes. He had no sin. And when He died and rose again, He actually took on all of our sin and cancelled it, like He crushed it. He said if we would turn away from our sin and believe in Jesus and make Jesus and the Lord of our life, we become restored, restored back into God's original design and you become a new creation, a new person in Christ. And will restore us back into relationship with Him. So there's only two kinds of people in this world, people that are in brokenness or God's perfect design. Where would you see yourself? Probably right there, to be honest. Did you see it? I'm not sure. Love? Brokenness? The bungee stage. <laughs> yeah, the same. And where would, would you, you like, like to So where be? would you like to be? Like You'd like to be here? Yeah. yeah. Right there. Yeah. Give me a look. That's so cool. One of God. So here? 
So is there anything that's stopping you? From turning and, and believing in Jesus. And allow him to be Lord and King of your life. Stubbornness. Probably not. Probably weird to be honest. Nothing's mm. stopping me. You know the awesome news about Jesus? He is the only way out. If you try to clean yourself up before coming to Jesus, it's like trying to get clean before you take a shower. Oh, I see, yeah, I get that. Is there anything stopping you? We shared the three circles with 34 people. Four were already believers. 13 chose to remain in brokenness, but some were deeply impacted. And 17 wanted to leave brokenness and receive Christ. There are many powerful ways to share the gospel, and the three circles is a great place to start. Twenty-six out of 100 people will suffer and receive a diagnosis of mental illness every single year. And many of those are sincere, devoted believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, but who are flawed. No one thinks they'll ever get depressed. And until you've been depressed, you think, there, you know, something's wrong with them. Let me tell you, something's wrong with life and our bodies are imperfect and you can face so many weights and have so much stuff coming against you that you are stressed so much and the physiology and the chemistry of your brain shifts until you receive help. You're not gonna come out of that. Matter of fact, you might take your own life. Jesus said, in this world you will have problems. Tribulation, whether you're good or bad, none of you are immune from the problems that we face. But be of good cheer, I have overcome this world, and if you trust me, I will lead you and expand you in living an overcoming life where no diagnosis defines you, but that you live in and above that diagnosis. Jesus came for broken, hurting, sick people. You know who we admire? People who have it all together, although no one does, and we're forever surprised by the person who has the money, who has the position, who has the fame, and then the bottom drops out and they take their life, or they wind up in a treatment center, or whatever else happens. And so Jesus, when people were criticizing him and saying, why are you hanging around all these weird, needy people? He says in Mark chapter two, verse 17, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I've come to call imperfect people who have the great revelation that they're imperfect and they need me. We realize this, God healed in many ways in the Bible, and he still does today in as many, if not more. Be ready, 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 be ready. Watch your enemy, be ready. The Christian life never takes anything for granted. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Our life must ever be diligent. We must ever be on the lookout. We must ever be conscious of the enemy, for the enemy wants to sneak in at an hour you least, you're, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you don't expect it. He's not going to announce that we're going to attack tomorrow. That's not the way that warfare operates. He's going to come and sneak through the back door when your guard is down. Be ready, be ready, be ready. He's going to come and take hold of one of your loved ones and he's going to come and bring accusations against you which are lies and deception. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. For the Bible said he cometh forth not but to kill and steal and destroy. The devil is a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The Bible said whom resist steadfast in the faith. Ever be diligent, ever be on the lookout. And I don't know what all the other services teach, and I respect, I respect the Army and the Navy and the Air Force and the Coast Guard. I respect them. But I'm going to tell you what they drill into your head when you go into the Marine Corps. Be ready. 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 
Watch your enemy. Be ready. And I'll never forget it. The stuff they teach you, you never forget. Christian, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ever diligent, ever watchful. Be ever diligent, ever watchful. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop meditating in your Bible. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop meditating in your Bible. Don't ever stop doing the spiritual things that feed your spiritual life. As a Christian, we are told that it is a fight for us. And we may not be fighting with, with our fists, but we're fighting with faith. For the Bible said we have to fight the good fight of faith. We have to fight to believe. We have to fight to endure. You have to fight to hold on. You have to fight to survive. You have to fight to raise your family. You have to fight to be a man. You have to fight to be a woman. You have to fight to be a mother. You have to fight to be a father. You have to fight, fight, fight. You have to fight inner fights too. You have to fight fear. You have to fight doubt. You have to fight insecurity. You have to fight childhood issues that linger into adult life. You have to fight to stand up every day, to be consistent, to be focused. Some people have to fight procrastination. There are all kinds of things you have to fight other than people. I don't care how you package yourself, whether you come in a white package, a brown package, a black package, a Baptist package, a Methodist package, a Catholic package. I don't care whether it's a rich package or a middle class package or a poor package. Nobody escapes. For all of the people who are poor and think, oh, if I just got rich, I'd have no problem. I hate to disappoint you. Rich people are in a fight. Middle class people are in a fight. The people who are living in the house you would love to have are in a fight. The people who are in the welfare line are in a fight. The people who don't have a job are in a fight. The people who got a job are in a fight. The people who own a business are in a fight. The people who got married got a fight. The people who remain single got a fight. There's no dodging it. There's no getting around it. There's no avoiding it. If you have children, you're going to have a fight. If you don't have children, you still got a fight. It's just a different kind of fight. You gotta fight traffic. You gotta fight to get recognition on your job. You gotta fight for a raise. You gotta fight to be acknowledged. You gotta fight if you got a job. You gotta fight if you lose a job. Don't quit. Don't collapse. Don't faint. Don't give in. Don't succumb to depression. You got, either way you go, you gotta fight. Be ready. 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 Watch your enemy. Be ready. Christian, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ever diligent. Ever watchful.